morning, folks. We'll just wait a few more minutes while uh, some more attendees jump onto the link. Uh, kick off in probably about one or two minutes. Welcome, by the way, and we'll speak more with you shortly. We'll just give another minute while the rest of the people jump on. For those of you who have just joined us. All right, ladies and gents, we might kick off now. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day because I know most of us are pretty, pretty busy. Just want to kick off with a bit of an introduction. So uh, on, on the screen, you'll see Colin. Colin's a product specialist at SASIN. Been with him for a number of years, and he knows all about the technology that we're about to explore in a bit more detail. For those of you that haven't met me yet, or I, I haven't met you, I'm Graham Lowbridge. I look after uh, the sales team here at Acucom. We've been working with education for 20 odd years and uh, do with a lot of the people that are on the call and some we may not have met yet. So for an agenda today, so I'll just give a bit of an overview to kick off. Uh, then I'll hand over to Colin who's going to run through the SASIN solution and, and do a bit of a live demonstration of how it may fit into your environment uh, and we'll explore that in a bit more detail. Uh, please feel free to throw any questions you have into the Q&A link in Zoom along the way. Uh, as applicable, we'll answer them throughout that journey, or if we need to, we can take them as a Q&A session right at the end. So just to set the scene, I'm fairly confident that most of you would actually have the firewall technology in your environment, Palo or 40 or, or Checkpoint or, or something similar. And it's probably doing a fairly good job of addressing your security, your perimeter concerns, your perimeter security, uh, for your site or sites, as you may have. Uh, maybe less effective in your cloud workloads, so that's probably a conversation for another day. But uh, I suspect that many of you have found that while the reporting that the firewall offers is fairly comprehensive for network and, and security operations and so on, it's probably less effective uh, when looking at, at, at sort of usage across your environment, whether it be students or staff. And I think um, typically it's only accessible by the sysadmin or the IT staff anyway, so it's not, it's not sort of able to be accessed further afield with the teachers and pastoral care people within the organisation. But assessing and, and that, can, we, we believe that it's essential uh, schools have a greater contextual understanding of, of internet usage from students and allow that, uh, that to, to be impacted also for staff to in that pastoral care role to, to use that information to make wise decisions and, and uh, respond to various issues that may come up. But to quote the UK-based Girls' Day School Trust, at its simplest, pastoral care is a provision of school makes to ensure the physical and emotional welfare of pupils. And it's a central foundation upon which learning can take place. And it's actually that concept which has really driven the development of SAS into where it is today. Now, just before I do hand over to Colin, um, as a reminder, please make sure you use a Q&A uh, part of, of Zoom, if you do have some questions along the way. Colin, all yours. Thanks so much, Graham. Uh, and thanks for all of you for joining today. Um, as Graham said, my name is Colin. I am a product specialist at SASE. And, and today we're going to run through a comprehensive overview of both the solution, if this is your first look, and also some um, opportunities to take this further if you are an existing customer. So SASE is an all cloud solution. Um, an AI-powered online student safety solution hosted on AWS, 
delivering on three primary values, flexible classroom controls, advanced alerts against cyberbullying, self-harm, threats of violence, and online grooming, and easy reporting of student online activity. The main premise here is uh, the, the way we integrate with your school's existing infrastructure, being that this is an all cloud solution, um, Sassian relies on four key APIs, which means that after that initial setup is complete, um, this pretty much requires almost no maintenance over time and is really designed to be leveraged by the broader team outside of just IT. So hopefully your role in this will be uh, a little bit more obviously at the start. And then once we've uh, finished up with the training and the implementation, um, the solution should be uh, easily used by teachers, pastoral care, well-being, leadership, and anyone else in your school. So the first integration I want to talk about is with your identity management. So this is essentially how um, Assure authenticates users to your firewall. So we receive individual um, logs and reporting data for individual user activity and are able to apply those policy overrides on an individual user, as well as any groups that you may have established. The second is with whatever you're using for collaboration and productivity. So whether that's a Google environment or a Microsoft environment, this is leveraged for chat and email inspection, as well as our newly announced Safe Image AI, which looks at a student's drive content for any evidence of nudity or sexually explicit um, images. The third integration involves your LMS. So this is another way of allowing um, teachers to access the software without leaving their tool of choice, bearing in mind that the majority of teachers have all of their uh, notes, helpful links, class lists, and materials within that LMS. So with that integration, um, Assure can quickly be leveraged either for the classroom view to display the classroom activity uh, for about 15 minutes worth of um, broad high-level kind of web, web overview, um, or to actually apply those policy overrides to the class or individual users within that class. And the final component is the integration with the firewall. So this obviously is how we receive any of those logs for the online activity reports. And with that API, we're able to execute those policy overrides to whatever firewall you have currently. So when you log in, you are greeted with a dashboard filled with fully customizable widgets. Um, hopefully one of the first things you notice is that this uh, is, doesn't look like a typical tech solution or IT solution. Um, and that's because this was designed with the end user experience bearing in mind that the uh, users of Assure are not just coming from a techn technological background. So have a lot of users from the well-being team, um, leadership, uh, or other areas where they may not be as accustomed to um, these kind of solutions. So pretty user-friendly. All this is fully interactive. So if you're seeing something that is concerning and you want to drill down a little bit further, uh, you can interact with any of this content, which will either take you to the report or the alert. This can also be fully customized. So if you are coming from an IT uh, perspective and would benefit from more technical information like your app bandwidth usage um, or heavy web users, you can select from a number of those. Or if you're wanting to display something like your at-risk users um, or you know, user internet score, this can all be rearranged to your liking. So starting with the flexible classroom controls that I mentioned, You'll see the temporary rule function, which is a great option to leverage if you wanna quickly grant access to something. Um, so as I mentioned before, with the integration to your identity provider, a user will only have visibility to their relevant users and groups. So teachers aren't needing to sift through, you know, dozens of, of groups that you may have set up. Um, they'll only have visibility to theirs. From here, you can go in and temporarily create an allow or block rule for anything from applications, web categories or specific URLs. So maybe you've got a teacher that wants to quickly grant access to a YouTube video for the duration of their class. I'll say 45 minutes, go ahead and click create. And that rule is immediately active on the firewall. The second component of this, um, which will likely be a first look for some of you, um, is the integration with the LMS. So this is an example of um, our integration with Schoology, which looks pretty much the exact same um, throughout Canvas, Google Classroom, um, and whatever, whatever other LMS you might be using. But you can see the SAS Unit Assure extension right from that workbook, where the teacher can access the classroom view that I was speaking to earlier, 
displaying 15 minutes worth of online activity for that entire class. Um, these web categories are coming directly from the firewall and are color coded based off of the ratings that have been established, which we'll go into in just a minute. But you can see green means they've not accessed any websites of concern. Amber might be mild to medium concern and red might be significant concern. So part of the difficulty that teachers face today with the implementation and increase of technology in the classroom is that they're sitting or, or standing on the other end of that screen. So ensuring visibility over student online act or student activity is a lot more difficult than it was in years past, where a student could easily or a teacher could easily observe um, what their students were doing, uh, being that it was you know, displayed on the desk. Whereas uh, this aims to bring back that sense of visibility and control to teachers so that they can be mindful of what their students are accessing. Or if they're noticing a group of students that might be distracted, they can quickly bring up the classroom view, which can provide an indication as to what they might be doing. And then subsequently leverage this to go in and set up a rule. So maybe that teacher has identified you've got a couple of students accessing games as displayed here. That teacher could go in, set up a rule, which will automatically apply to their class. So you'll notice here the um, option to select groups is missing because this rule will apply to just that class. Um, so that teacher could go in and either grant or block access to a particular web category or URL. So let's say in this instance, um, this teacher wants to go ahead and grant access to health and medicine, student email, and reference and research, and go ahead and block everything else to ensure that we're all on the same page. Um, in establishing this, that teacher can go ahead and click save, which will apply that rule to their users. And you can see that's immediately active. The final element of these rules involves the more expanded view from right within Assure. So from the rules menu item, when you click add rule, you can select from a much more expanded rule criteria. So here a user can set up an indefinite or temporary rule um, depending on if this is allowed in your environment. Again, whether or not they're allowing or blocking something, specified users and groups. And we can also work to in incorporate your school's schedule. So if you'd like users to be able to create a rule that would activate on command in accordance with that schedule, you can do so here. So maybe that teacher is mapping out their week and they know that um, maybe for the next couple of weeks, um, they wanna go ahead and have a rule that will activate on command within uh, their period one class on Monday and Wednesday that will allow access to those same categories we talked about, health and medicine, web-based email and reference and research. We'll go ahead and set that duration to two weeks where that rule will activate on command for those users in that class during those periods. So going into a couple of the admin menu items before we dive into the creation of alerts and reports, um, I just wanna highlight where this information is coming from and a couple of controls that you can leverage in your environment to make sure that if you do grant access to the rules capability or the alerts capability, that that is set up to your liking to ensure privacy, uh, limited visibility and limited access to rules that you might not want to um, allow users to. First of all, within the permissions, you can establish every single user in your environment and whether or not they can access reports, alerts, and rules. Um, second of all, within the web categories option, these are displaying all the web categories coming from your firewall. So here, uh, there's, there's no ability to add in or modify this information that's fed to us right from your existing setup. But what you can do is establish the rating for each of these categories. So web categories are gonna to apply to the websites visited and videos watched. Um, and this is a great opportunity to just start involving the well-being team at your school and encourage them to go through either in a training session with us or um, through our on-demand training content to basically assign these um, a rating on a scale of poor to excellent. Now, from a control perspective, you have the ability to define whether or not a category is even reportable to Assure. So that when you go into something like your dashboard or generate a web report, you're not given unnecessary information um, based off of your setup. So if you've created any custom categories, 
um, or, or particular categories that wouldn't benefit you to have visibility over, those can be excluded here. And lastly, you can define each category, whether or not that's available to the rules created. So even if you do grant access to a user to be able to create rules, you still have the ability to restrict access to certain categories. For example, adult, most likely something that you would never want a, a user to be able to grant access to. Um, and all this information can be modified simply by clicking edit and making those changes. Um, the next key component for the alerts and reports involves our words and phrases dictionary. Um, so you may have noticed if you're an existing customer that your dictionary has a few additional recommendations in your crowdsourced tab. We'll go into that in just a minute, but to introduce the dictionary, um, this allows you to essentially set explicit triggers for any words and phrases used throughout your infrastructure. So keeping in mind that because Sassing is an AI powered online solution, there's a significant amount of AI used when we generate these alerts for you. So even without a dictionary, more than likely, you'd still be getting the majority of your alerts coming through using that AI to identify the context of whatever word or phrase is triggering that. But this um, dictionary serves as kind of a secondary layer of control where you can define um, explicitly that if any of these words are triggered, that you would definitely get an alert. You can see we've got about a thousand items within the, the local dictionary provided to you. And you'll also note this crowdsourced option which allows users um, around the globe when they add to their dictionary and our team has validated those amendments and um, basically identified that not only would they be benefit beneficial to you, but also that they don't contain any personal or sensitive information. Um, our team will release words every two weeks um, to go into this crowdsourced uh, tab where you can go in and either accept or reject individual items or do a mass accept or reject of all. You'll also see a new suggested action um, recommending either the removal or addition of words. So maybe the sassing team has identified that there's a word in the dictionary that could be uh, triggering some false positives. We might have a recommendation to remove this word. So you have the ability to choose whether or not you'd like this manual or if you'd like this to be automatic um, and synchronize and update your local dictionary as those changes take place. One of the biggest things here is uh, really trying to encourage you all to get creative with this um, and use this to your advantage. So if you have, uh, for example, individual staff names where they might've been referred to inappropriately in the past, um, you can go in and add any of those to your dictionary as well as adding in classifications as they come up. So you can see on this list of classifications, it's quite comprehensive um, and we've definitely done our best to curate this and make this as relevant to the students of today and what kind of terms they're using. But if anything does come up, you can easily add in a classification. Um, some of the more common additions being something like network bypass. Maybe you wanna proactively identify students that are searching for VPNs or something like that. So you can see all the different ways that you can use this depending on your demographic and what you've identified in your school. Um, furthermore, you have the ability to control a couple of other things. So when we talk about those rules, um, understandably, sometimes there's hesitation around granting access to rules across your environment. So there's a number of controls that you can leverage to ensure that when those rules are created, um, they genuinely are best suited for you. So a good example of this is the maximum override duration. So maybe you, you wanna have teachers be able to create rules, but you don't wanna to have to police those or keep in mind or keep track of the active rules in your environment. So you can see easily you can control if you wanna set the maximum duration for a rule to be one hour, um, that can easily be done here. So there's pretty much individual settings to customize all of this so that not only are you able to define who has access to what, um, but the extent of what access they have. So now we'll go ahead and go into the setup of those alerts. So when you're creating an alert, just like the rules function, this is coming off of your identity. Um, so users are only gonna be able to create rules, or I'm sorry, alerts for their relevant groups. Um, so let's go ahead and say, we wanna create a category alert. Um, again, this one is for the websites visited and the videos watched. Let's select adults drugs and alcohol, 
and maybe weapons. And classifications, go ahead and say cyberbullying, self-harm, threats of violence. And I might throw one more in, uh, we'll do profanity. So keep in mind with your category alerts, these will only be triggered if that website is accessed. Um, so what about a student that has attempted to access one of those sites, but you already have an existing rule that's blocking that? You can leverage your classification alerts to still be able to identify kind of the attempted search. Um, so if a student is looking to access an adult web category, for example, more than likely the words that they'll be using to access that would fall under sexually explicit. So even if they haven't accessed that website, which wouldn't trigger a category alert, you can still leverage the classification alert based off of the individual search. Now you'll also see here the ability to define whether or not you'd like an immediate notification or if you're happy to receive those alerts compiled in your daily well-being alert email. So maybe for the more urgent safety concerns uh, like weapons or self-harm and threats of violence, you want to go ahead and set an immediate trigger which means that when those, when those words and phrases or web activity um, that is triggered, you would get an immediate email um, outlining whatever that was. Whereas the others, we can just have those in the once a day email. For non-immediate notification-based alerts, you have a number of different controls to outline the prioritization of those alerts in your email. So you can leverage the cohort relative, which can identify a student's peer activity um, which basically means if maybe you've got a lesson um, going through, a common one would probably be words pertaining to sexual health or sexual assault. Um, normally those, those um, search items might be triggered. However, if you've got 20 students that are doing research, the cohort relative will assign that a lower priority based off of the assumption that could be a class project. Or you can set up a recurrence-based prioritization, which looks at the frequency of the classification that's been triggered. So if a student has done a one-off search, or if that's a, a common occurrence, or you can just simply say none, or all of your alerts will be, just be simply compiled in that email. Now, when you receive the email, um, that's delivered right to your inbox and provides insights to the users found within your alert, the classifications, um, and then sorted by priority based off of how that alert has been set up. So here we've got a couple of dictionary-based alerts, the first being self-harm, where a student sent the message um, basically around, I hate my life, I wish I could unalive myself. So this is an example of a word that's actually coming from the dictionary. And the way you can tell is that it's underlined. So if it's underlined, it means that that's coming from an exact dictionary match from Assure's local dictionary. You also have visibility to the users involved in this alert, as well as the platform and the period. Where this second alert here is a, an AI-based alert, still coming from the, a dictionary, which means it's from a word or phrase, um, but it's AI because there's no actual underlying phrase. So this one, a student sent, you're so annoying. Why is this so difficult for you? Um, obviously, the assumption is that you are so annoying is the evidence of cyberbullying there. Um, but you can also see that when we're just looking at the individual message, we might be missing some context. So you have the ability to investigate this further, which will take you to the actual alert found within Assure to be able to show that context. Um, the last of our high priority alerts, we've got a threats of violence classification trigger. A student has searched where to buy a gun. We've got some lower priority alerts. Um, this is an example of our safe image AI, which has essentially inspected a student's Google Drive and has found a particular image that was accessed that um, appears to have contained evidence of nudity. So when you click that investigate button, that's going to take you to the alerts for that particular user. So here we have a couple of those chat based alerts. Um, for example, the message um, where a student said you were so annoying. Obviously, when we're just looking at that, it might be difficult to know the context. Whereas here we can actually view the entire chat history on either side of that message and even export this to a PDF. Now, uh, our newly announced safe image AI has yet to be demonstrated. So if there are any current Assure customers, this may be the first look into this function. Um, when you're filtering out your alerts, 
You can do this based off of whether or not that was an allow or block, um, chat, email, search, or view. So if there are any alerts coming from your environment that are pertaining to the safe image AI and the inspection of a student's drive, that's gonna be displayed by the view type. And you'll see the icon here for context um, in contrast to the user report or the chat context is actually gonna have the ability to display an image. Um, so this particular alert is coming from um, a sexually explicit classification. And there's obviously gonna be a warning before anything is displayed. Um, so that way, if you are in a setting where you're not wanting to show that, um, there's, there's a blur over that image, um, but essentially we can uh, see the kind of context for whatever it was that was accessed. So these alerts are based off of the triggers that you set up, where the reports are based off of investigation. So maybe from those alerts, you've identified a few students to look out for, um, or you've, you've maybe had conversations with a student following one of those alerts, and now you want to go in and see if their online activity has improved um, since discussing a behavioral issue. You have a couple of different options when generating a report. Um, the first is a user report where you can display individual use user information for a specified period of time. For this, we'll go ahead and say, actually it's mid-month, we'll say the last 30 days. Generate report, and you're given a high-level overview of that user's web rating, which is coming from whatever ratings you've established in your web categories. You can see videos viewed, URLs blocked, data consumption, and can drill down even further by navigating through a number of different options at the top here. So you can see a, a graphical or visual rep representation of the alerts triggered, full list of a student's web activity and how that relates to their peers. Same thing with applications, which also displays the data consumption. So this is a good tool to identify if a student has actually spent significant time streaming something or if that was just something running in the background. Um, so for example, YouTube or Disney Plus, um, obviously if we're looking at gigabytes worth of data, more than likely they were um, actually streaming that. Here you can see a user's web rating over time. Maybe you've noticed a period of decline, which can paint a good picture as to what might be going on in a student's personal life that could be attributed to a decrease in academic performance or engagement. Here you've got a full search history. An entire list of videos viewed with the ability to launch that video for yourself. And then lastly, any alerts that they have um, appeared in. So from these alerts, um, let's say maybe you've identified a particular trigger that's actually not concerning. And now you want to go ahead and whitelist whatever that was. So whether or not this is coming from your uh, the category alerts based off of web activity, or if this is a dictionary alert and a word that was used, you can easily whitelist whatever that trigger was um, and exclude that from future alerts. Next, you can generate an app report, which will basically show all the app um, the applications accessed for a group. Same thing with web activity. And the offline user report, which has received a significant update rather than just providing a list of users not detected or found offline, um, your data is actually distributed in a visual uh, distribution of the actual duration that users were not online. So rather than just saying, you know, we've got these six or seven students that were not detected, you can actually see the periods that they were offline. Um, so this is another opportunity to involve the, the teaching staff as well. So that way, rather than needing to police this on a really high level, cross match this with attendance, uh, a teacher can go in, create an offline user report for just their class um, and kind of fine tune that for maybe the last hour, which will provide a much smaller list hopefully and allow that teacher to be able to see any students within their class that are offline and address that immediately rather than, you know, as an IT or leadership team needing to go in later throughout the day, cross match that with attendance and then try to chase that up. So in contrast to these four alerts, um, we can kind of do the reverse of this by going into the advanced report option. So if any of you attended our webinar back in July dealing with well-being, um, talking about proactive counseling and how to kind of take a sure a little bit further, um, 
This is a great resource to leverage from a pastoral care perspective. Maybe you've identified a particular video that contains concerning content that's been circulating around um, or a, a, a particular website. You can then go in and generate a report um, based off of a video title, search phrase, or URL, which will provide you a list of any student that's accessed this. Um, so this could be used for a number of different things. If it's something as simple as just a, a mildly concerning search phrase that could be indicating a, a larger issue. Um, oftentimes we've had schools tell us that they've used this after um, a traumatic event or something, if there's a, a school shooting um, where bystander videos are being distributed. And they wanna be able to have that conversation with students that access that um, and check in from a well-being perspective and make sure they're doing okay. You can leverage this tool as a really great option to increase that sense of visibility. All right, so that's a full look at the software. Um, a couple of other things I wanna to touch on before we jump to our Q&A um, are just the support elements involved with the implementation of SASE and Ensure. Um, so I wanna highlight something that some of you may have uh, forgotten about, which is the uh, access to the user guide. So if there's anything you're unsure of or wanna revisit, um, this is easily accessible right from the dashboard, as well as the get support option. So our support teams are readily available and accessible, whether or not that's an optimization session, assisting you with training, um, answering a question, and also the increased visibility that comes from a solution like Assure. Um, so I think one of the common themes is kind of how to adapt to that change management um, and having all this access to um, you know, a student's entire web activity and combing through those alerts. So our team is really here to help you adapt to that, that increased visibility and adapt to that change, um, whether that's training, optimization, um, some quick tips for how to kind of start small before we roll this out across the entire team, um, and a number of different resources that can be leveraged. So at this time, I think I'll go ahead and open it up to any sort of questions. Um, you might have. So if you do have any questions, those that are on the call, then please put them into the Q&A uh, chat box down below. Haven't got any just yet. Um, so Colin, maybe you just want to uh, summarize which firewall vendors that you do work with as well, just for people's information. I know we touched on it briefly, but maybe just give that a bit more context. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just quickly go back to the integration diagram. So when it comes to supportive firewall providers, as of right now, it's Fortinet, Zscaler, Palo Alto, and Sophos. I'm hoping to implement support soon for Cisco, but as of right now, um, it would just be those four. And also with regards to integration, um, we did touch on this a little bit in this detail, but uh, um, questions coming, I'll get you in a sec. Uh, but it's really just extracting the logs from those firewalls itself. So, uh, and I'll see the, the integration back in for the rule set, but there's no other direct involvement on that firewall. So a couple of questions that have come in. Um, so one, we have CyberHound, would this be a replacement for CyberHound? Um, so there's two answers to that. Uh, the first is yes, if it was done in a combined solution to an extent. So CyberHound being that there's uh, CyberHound is a content filter. Um, obviously, a combined solution of Assure and a FortiGate setup or a Zscaler setup or Palo Alto setup um, would, would deliver on similar value. However, Assure takes that visibility a little bit further. Um, so if you're you know, wanting to keep CyberHound as a content filter rather than looking at a firewall refresh, you could also explore the Assure Collaboration Edition, which is just the integration into collaboration and productivity. So this would involve chat, email, chat, email, and drive inspection, but would not come with the, um, you know, online activity reports or alerts based off of online activity. And another question is: Image AI inspection available for Microsoft 365 yet? For example, OneDrive, Teams, Outlook, or SharePoint. Um, in the Microsoft environment, this is kind of in its final stages of testing. So as of right now, it's available for Google Drive. Um, but our engineering team should have this available hopefully soon for um, any of our current customers using Microsoft. Any more questions? Uh, we've 
Looks like we're going to be finished a little bit earlier than we expected today, which is good. Give some time back in your day. Uh, but is there any more questions that we can address for for you all this morning? Actually, it's good morning. Not quite afternoon yet. All right, all right, well, this is anything that drops in. So just to add further to that, so we obviously we've talked about the, the SAS in, in, in quite a, a degree of detail this morning. Um, I will just put my details into the chat if you want to get some further information or set up some uh, meetings to discuss in de more detail. But ACAM is also able to assist, not, obviously not only with SAS in, but also able to assist with uh, some firewall technology as well, whether it be on-prem or cloud or whatever solution uh, strikes your fancy. But, uh, oops, let me just put in one thing about it, sorry. Here's my details. Uh, but more than happy to engage with you, whether it be virtually or on site, that depends what suits uh, the particular requirement you have, and we can discuss either SASIAN or, or the final technology in detail. Um, all right, listen, any further questions or comments, Colin, that you would like to add? We might um, call that a wrap and give some people some time back in the day. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. Um, so we'll make the recording of this accessible to everyone. Um, and thanks again for, for listening to the demo. Thanks, folks. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Have a great day.